So here we're going to try to describe the inductive transformer. This is an inductive load. There is no connection between the primary. Now this is a primary side here. It's 240 volts. There's no electrical connection between this side and this side. This is 24 volts. So it's 240 in, 24 out. Now obviously I've whacked this thing up. So we will be looking at this part of it now. Now what I want to point out here is we've got two sets of windings. We've got this set of windings here, a very small wire. That's the 240 volt, because this is a step-down transformer. Remember, 240 to 24, one-tenth uh, of the voltage. Okay, so I have all these windings here, quite a number of them. And then I've got these windings here. Now that's the secondary, that's the 24 volt. Okay, there's a lot more windings in the primary than there is in the secondary. The reason for this is, let's say I had the same amount of windings in the primary and secondary. The voltage would stay the same. It would not change. Because each one of these wires gets a magnetic field around it on AC when it shuts off this field collapses and when it collapses each one of these wires has a field that collapses around each one of these wires okay that induces power from the primary to the secondary that's that thing where collapsing fields magnetic fields induce power in another wire. Okay, so each one of these has a field around it, and when that field collapses, it collapses around these wires here, but there's only one tenth of the number of wires going through the secondary. So with each one of those, it's going to induce power, but if there's only one tenth, it will induce voltage of one tenth of what the primary is getting. You notice these wires are a lot smaller on the primary than they are in the secondary. That's because the primary carries less amperage than the secondary. Reason being the voltage is lower so the amperage has to be higher. If the primary had one amp going through it, the secondary would have 10. Because the voltage went down, the amperage had to go up. So essentially the same amount of power coming in as coming out, it's just different voltage and amperage. But that's those collapsing fields. This iron core concentrates, it makes it work better. And they're very, very close. You can see just a tiny little space between them. That space is very important because the closer it is, the better the transfer of the magnetic uh, lines of force crossing here and making a current in the secondary winding. You know, that's pretty much all there is to those things. It's not complicated, but it's a little odd that it works that way. And of course, it only works with AC because the fields collapse at each cycle. So anyway, that is how the inductive transformer operates. This could be a step up, step down, doesn't make any difference. You just change the, uh, the number of windings in it to, to change it. And if I was to take 24 volts and put it in here, it would induce 240 volts there. So it works backwards too. Anyway, that's the uh, the transformer, I hope I've explained this well. I've kind of tried it before a couple of times, and I don't think I did a really good job, but that's it on this one.